Have you ever gazed at the stars and wondered, how did life begin? Today, we'll explore this intricate query, journeying through the cosmos of scientific theories. We'll touch upon the atomic theory, the role of carbon, the Miller-Urey experiment, and the intriguing RNA world theory. Lastly, we'll discuss the emergence of the first DNA cells. It's a journey through time and space, through elements and molecules, through complexities and simplicities. So, are you ready? Join us as we delve deeper into this mind-boggling question. Picture this, the universe, 13.8 billion years ago, filled with nothing but atoms, void of life, how did we get from there to here? At its most fundamental level, everything around us, including us, is made up of atoms. From the air we breathe to the stars in the sky, atoms are the building blocks of matter. But what exactly are atoms? Well, they're incredibly small particles that can join together to form molecules, which in turn combine to form everything we see and touch. Now imagine the early universe, a cosmic soup of atoms swirling around colliding and bonding to form molecules. Over billions of years these molecules became more complex, forming larger structures. This is the crux of the atom theory, suggesting that life originated simply from atoms combining to form molecules. It's a bit like cooking, really. Think of atoms as the ingredients. Flour, sugar, and butter on their own aren't much to write home about, but mix them together in the right way and you've got yourself a delicious cake. In the same way, the right atoms, given enough time and the right conditions, could combine to form the complex molecules necessary for life. This idea isn't as far-fetched as it might seem. Take amino acids, for instance. They're the building blocks of proteins, which are vital for life as we know it. And guess what? Amino acids are made up of just a handful of atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. But here's the thing, the jump from simple atoms to complex life is a big one. Even the simplest living organism is incredibly complex, made up of millions of molecules, all working together in harmony. So could life have simply originated from atoms? Perhaps, but there's more to the story. The atom theory is just one piece of the puzzle. To fully understand how life may have originated, we need to delve deeper, to explore other theories and scientific experiments. After all, the question of life's origin is one of the most fascinating mysteries of our time. Why is carbon so special that it's often linked with life's origins? That's a question that's been tickling the minds of scientists for years. To answer that, let's dive into the unique properties of carbon that make it a prime candidate for the building block of life. At the heart of carbon's uniqueness is its ability to form stable, long-lasting bonds with other elements, including itself. This property is due to its four valence electrons, which allow it to form a variety of stable configurations. This bonding capability is the foundation of complex molecules, and it's what makes carbon the superstar of organic chemistry. But carbon's talents don't stop there. Carbon atoms can link together to form chains, rings, and other complex structures, essentially providing a molecular canvas upon which life can paint its masterpieces. These structures in turn can serve as the building blocks for even larger and more complex molecules such as proteins and DNA, the fundamental components of life as we know it. Now let's talk about the theory that life originated from carbon-based molecules. This theory, often referred to as the carbon-based life theory, proposes that life on Earth began with simple carbon-based molecules, which gradually evolved into more complex forms. The theory is based on the observation that all known life forms on Earth are carbon-based, and the fact that carbon is abundant in the universe. The theory suggests that these simple carbon-based molecules could have formed in the early Earth's oceans, perhaps aided by heat from the Earth's core or energy from lightning strikes. Over time, these molecules could have undergone chemical reactions to form more complex molecules eventually leading to the first primitive life forms. This theory is not without its challenges, of course. The exact processes and conditions that would have allowed these simple carbon-based molecules to evolve into life remain a subject of intense scientific study and debate. So, carbon might be the key, but how did these carbon-based molecules form life? As we continue our journey through the origins of life, we'll delve deeper into this question, exploring the fascinating experiments and theories that have been put forward to answer it. In 1953, Stanley Miller and Harold Urey may have found a clue. These two scientists sought answers in a flask and a series of tubes, staging a dramatic reenactment of Earth's early environment. They called it the Miller-Urey Experiment, a laboratory simulation of conditions thought to be present on the early Earth over 4 billion years ago. So, 
What did these conditions look like? Picture this. A world with a thick atmosphere of methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water vapor. The early Earth, essentially, was a hot, wet, and volatile place. The Miller-Urey experiment was designed to mimic these conditions, to see if they could coax life's building blocks from a primordial soup of chemicals. In their experiment, Miller and Urey assembled a closed system of glass flasks and tubes, filled it with the gases they believed made up early Earth's atmosphere, and then introduced a spark to simulate lightning. This setup was left to stew for about a week, with the spark continuously firing. When they examined the results they found a surprising array of organic molecules. The most significant of these were amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. Proteins as we know are essential for all known forms of life. This was a monumental discovery. It suggested that the conditions on early Earth could have produced the complex molecules necessary for life. However, it's important to remember that amino acids are just one piece of the puzzle. They're necessary for life, but they're not life themselves. The Miller-Urey experiment showed us that life's building blocks could potentially form under early Earth conditions, but it didn't show us how these building blocks could assemble into something living. The experiment was a significant step forward in our understanding of life's origins. It opened up a new field of study known as prebiotic chemistry dedicated to understanding how life could arise from non-living matter. Miller and Urey's experiment was groundbreaking but it didn't fully explain how life began. It was a tantalizing clue, a signpost pointing the way towards deeper mysteries and further questions. Enter the RNA world theory, a compelling idea that suggests life began with a single self-replicating molecule. In our quest to understand the origin of life, we've encountered the RNA world theory. This theory proposes that life on Earth began with RNA or ribonucleic acid. This molecule is a close relative of DNA, the blueprint of life as we know it. But unlike DNA, RNA has a unique ability that makes it a prime candidate for life's first molecule. It can catalyze chemical reactions, much like proteins do in our bodies today. Let's rewind to a time when Earth was just a newborn planet a landscape of fiery volcanoes and oceans of molten rock. In this hostile environment, the theory suggests, RNA molecules formed from simple organic compounds. These RNA molecules were able to replicate themselves, kickstarting a process of evolution that eventually led to the complex life forms we see today. But how does RNA fit into modern life? Well, RNA is an essential part of all living cells. It acts as a messenger, carrying instructions from DNA to the cell's protein-making machinery. It also plays a key role in regulating genes and fighting viruses. This versatility lends credence to the idea that RNA could have been the first molecule of life. There's also some experimental evidence to back up the RNA world theory. Scientists have created RNA molecules in the lab that can replicate themselves and even evolve, given the right conditions. These findings suggest that RNA could have played a central role in the origin of life. However, it's essential to note that the RNA world theory is not without its challenges. For one, it doesn't explain how the first RNA molecules came into existence. Moreover, RNA is a complex molecule, and it's hard to imagine how it could have formed in the harsh conditions of early Earth. The RNA world theory is intriguing, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Let's look at the final theory. Imagine the first DNA cells forming in the primordial soup of early Earth. This may sound like a sci-fi movie, but it's a theory that some scientists seriously consider. Picture a world billions of years ago, filled with simple molecules. In this setting, the right conditions could have allowed these molecules to join together forming complex chains of DNA. This is not as far-fetched as it sounds. DNA is made of four building blocks, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. These components, or nucleotides, could have spontaneously assembled in the early Earth's environment. Once formed, DNA could replicate itself, setting the stage for the evolution of life. These first DNA cells could have been the precursors to all life as we know it. They would have evolved, diversified, and eventually given rise to the vast diversity of life we see today. While these theories provide fascinating insights, the true origin of life remains one of the greatest mysteries of our time. So, who created life on Earth? We've journeyed through atoms and carbon, delved into the Miller-Urey experiment, and explored the RNA world theory. We've even stepped back to the first DNA cells. Each theory lends a piece to this cosmic puzzle, yet the exact origin of life remains elusive. Maybe it's the grand mystery of it all that keeps us asking, keeps us searching. Perhaps one day, we'll uncover the truth. Until then, 
the origin of life continues to be one of the most intriguing questions of our existence.